This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, it's a fabulous day as we get closer and closer and closer to the Author You extravaganza. And as I have been doing the last few weeks, I've been featuring some of our really critical key uh, speakers and sessions. And today is no exception. In fact, today is really critical for you and your book and why it's called Amplifying. How do you amplify what you have? How do you amplify who you are as your brand? How do you amplify your book and be make it what? As what uh, Bill Van Orsdale said last week, how do you turn the, your potential readers into not only super readers, but super fans? So with us is Lori Ruff, and Lori has been known for over 10 years as the LinkedIn diva. She's the chief branding evangelist at Alpha, which is the Association of Latino Professionals for America. And when she's not working to empower Latino leaders, she's speaking, working, on her seventh and eighth books simultaneously, I'm proud of you, Lori, and completing work on her master's degree from Liberty University. She's also, I'm proud to say, a member of the Author You Board, and she helps more people realize the reality of their own published work, which she believes opens doors to greater personal professional accomplishment, and boy, I sure do. So the presentation she's going to be doing at the Author You Extravaganza is designed to give current and aspiring authors a sense of not only who, the, who and what their brand is, but how to represent it and shout it out to the world. So, Lori, welcome to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. Hey, thank you so much, Judith. I cannot wait to see you in just a couple weeks. I know, I know. And we're going to be roomies, right? Yes, we're going to be yeah. roomies. And I yep. think this is my third um, third visit to Author You. It, it was. It, it, it is. Yeah. <laughs> you have been there before. I, I, I've, I've both as a speaker and attendee. I mean, it's, it's, it's a brilliant. I I've, I've encourage everybody I know to, uh, to attend if they even are thinking about writing a book. Because if, actually, if you're thinking oh, yeah. about it, but you don't have all the facts, the here you get the facts, and that'll that'll help you decide. Yeah, I'm ready for this, or or no, I'm, I haven't thought it through yet. Well, and the, you know what, Laurie, that's um, one of the problems I see in a lot of book publishing. Like, like I'm um, th- this weekend, I'm actually doing the keynote for the Las Vegas Writers Conference, and that which I'm really looking forward to being actually where it's really warm in Las Vegas. <laughs> really looking forward to that. <laughs> but but I love working with aspiring authors and, and, and helping them do a reality check. Um, because that it's it, if you are you writing just because you like to gaze in your belly button and that's really good. Or are you you know, I have no problem with that. Or is there a really game plan of what you want to do? Is it gonna add to your expertise? Are you positioning yourself? Do you want to turn this kind of little hobby you have into a full blown vocation? What is it you want to do? And I think those reality checks are so critical. So coming to the author you extravaganza, number one really shows you you gotta work your tush off. It, it, don't right. don't try to skirt this. You do work your tush off to be successful, and that's really where you come into play. Because if they get what their brand is, or they noodle that and they bring right. that about, yeah. and then they learn how to position themselves, they have mm-hmm. got it all together with that. I mean, I think well, it's the difference that, between a, between a an approach and working really hard and working really focused. And and I mm-hmm. I mean even even the book I'm working on now, Sweet Branding, uh, the very first thing I did, literally the day the concept came up and and um, and became a reality in my mind, the very first phone call I made was to you, and and this is my eighth book, 
You know, because it, it doesn't matter whether you're new or or you're not so new. The changes are happening in the in the marketplace, but each project becomes a new project, and there's always new things to learn through it. And I think that's one of my favorite things about writing in my own mind is how it makes me much more aware of the world around me and how it applies based on the topic that I'm working on at the time. And that's that's literally how to do it. That's a, that's a, it's the component of it. Okay, so let's jump into this a little bit. So, as you know, a lot of people talk about branding. It's almost kind of like a cliche word at some points. But so, what is it? You know, what really is branding? Is 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 it just a name? Is it a logo? Is it color? Is it just your book? I mean, really, Lori, what is branding? And what are the components of putting this all together? That, that's a great question, and I, I love that we're starting right there because so many people are talking about personal branding, and you talk about company brands, and you've got Pepsi that owns Mountain Dew that owns, you know, I mean, all of these. Is it a, is Pepsi a brand or is it a company? Well, you know, it's technically both. Um, it, it really comes down to who are you when when you think even of of um, Colorado, for example, they have a branding officer, somebody who's in charge of marketing Colorado. Well, what are you marketing? You're not just marketing the state, you're marketing the culture and the outdoor activities and the mountains and the, you know, all of the things that it has to offer. So it's kind of like looking at someone with a complete, um, in, in a complete manner. Now, when I go to camp, um, every now and then my sister is a nurse and she wants to go to summer camp and she works and volunteers for a couple of weeks and I go help out at the stables. I love horses and that's my time every couple of years to go out and work at the stables. And those people don't know I own a suit because why would I bring it to camp? Right. But then I get back to work. I put on my suit. I go stand on stage and speak and they don't know I'm, I was mucking stalls last week. So what, which part mm-hmm. of that is really part of my brand? Well, it depends on who I'm talking to and what we're talking about. If, if I am, um, you know, in our, on our first book, for example, Rock the World with Your Online Presence, your ticket to a multi-platinum LinkedIn profile, it was all about LinkedIn and the foundational knowledge of preparing your LinkedIn profile in such a way that you represented yourself well as a dynamic professional individual to the world. It was much more than a resume. That's what I've always said. And so people, when you look at their LinkedIn profile and all you see is their resume, is, well, this guy's looking for a job. This guy's just, you know, looking to get hired somewhere. And that's what people think. So do you want people to think, yes, okay, cool, they're just writing a book, or they're a speaker, or they're a paid speaker? Yeah, I was going to say, resumes are can be as exciting as watching, reading a resume can be as exciting as watching grass grow. I mean, really, people. <laughs> Don't yeah. post unless that's the person you're looking for. Then you're jumping up and down. Oh, my God, I found them. Oh, great. But, <laughs> but that, and that kind of comes to it. I mean, it's really the whole person and how you represent yourself. So the more you think about who you are and what you're all about, um, you know, how do you differentiate yourself from the world? Are you writing on a topic that somebody else has already written about? Likely. Go look at the other books and how they represent themselves. And when you look at the books in that genre or in that topic or that focus that are the best sellers, you'll see that there are consistencies about them. Now, isn't that interesting? I'm going to write a book. I want to go see who else is written on that topic and which ones mm-hmm. are doing well and what do they have in common and how are they standing out from each other? Just like if I'm going to go to the high school prom, I want to go see what all my friends are going to be wearing. Are they wearing short dresses this year? Is it long? Are they pink? Are they wearing flowers? You know, I mean, high school prom, how many people remember what that was like, right? And so we always go look and check out what everybody else is wearing. Why? Because if you show up at the prom in jeans and a T-shirt, you're not going to be allowed in. You know, so if you want to join the conversation, you have to show up prepared for that conversation and prepared to address that audience, whether you're part of the audience and you want to have your voice heard by participating in the discussion or you want to start leading the discussion and being seen as a thought leader and seen as an expert in your space and then being asked to be on stage. And that's the power of brand. That's what that will do for you. I've met so many authors that... You know, they wrote a book and they're really not clear about who their audience is. Well, how how do you write a book without knowing who you're talking to? And and that's where people 
make the mistakes. And that's what separates Lori when we can see very quickly the difference between the self-publish vanity and the ones that really did their homework to get it out. Right now, I have to tell you, we're working with one of our authors who is married to putting everything in the world. God, I have this conversation all the time on the cover, every little element on it. And it, it looks like this hodgepodge collage, and it says nothing instead of finding one critical focal point to snag someone and pull it in. And then, literally, right. because there's three books in this series, it starts the branding. And, and trying right. to get that element across is sometimes I feel like I have to go bang my head on the wall. Maybe I should take their head with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you said focal point because that really does a good job. Now, if your listeners will look up um, heat maps online of like Facebook heat maps or website heat maps. What mm-hmm. that does is a study of when somebody lands on a web page, where does their eye drop first? And and that point, that focal point is really what what is this page all about? Well on the Facebook heat map, the very first place and on LinkedIn too by the way, the very first place that people's eyes drop are on the top left corner where their brand logo is. That is the most important point on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. All the high-powered social networks have it right. And it's the top left for the most part because of how we read. But even in other cultures who don't read left or right, there's some slight variations of how their their um, their layout looks and their, their user interface. But for the most part, everything is still there at the top left. So I'm going into LinkedIn. I know I'm going into LinkedIn. I'm going into LinkedIn to find somebody and my eyes drop on the LinkedIn logo. What's that all about? That's all about branding and making the person that's looking at your brand, no matter how you're representing it, be very, very clear about who and what you're about. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I, I think that's a great tip. Go to heat maps and just start looking up and paying attention. Now, it used to be, I, I, I can remember people in social media saying, oh, no, you need to have your, your, your call to action, your, your top thing on the right. But because most um, North Americans, anyway, are reading from north, you know, left to right, Europeans left to right, that you start mm-hmm. getting your image, that brand, to the left, and then the call to action would come on the right. Is that correct? Yes. Exactly. Okay. So, all right. So let's, we're going to take a quick break. Lori Ruff is our guest expert, and we're talking about branding. Lori is going to be speaking at the Author You Extravaganza. Come out to Denver and meet her. We'll be right back. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 866 3226. 1106 Design. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed punch and panache author you is for you if you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at authoryou.org. follow author you on twitter at 
Author You, and on Facebook at Author You, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author You, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's ncgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryle. Oh, branding is so critical, so important. And I, I know even for my own handle on Twitter, I actually don't use my name, Judith Bryles. I use my book, Shepherd, and it goes out. And that's really where I direct most of my energy. And then this, the backup one is um, at Author You, which is more inclined to Author You, but they're both tied to my name. But between the two of them, there's roughly 56,000 followers there. And that if that's the book shepherd is what I've made a decision to do the branding on. Lori, do you have any thoughts? Do you do your name? Do you do a tagline? Like I know my friend Joan Stewart, who has been a frequent guest on this show, it really goes out as a publicity hound. That's her brand. Mm-hmm. You know, and I like that because publicity hound really tells you exactly what she does she's going to go right. after it she's going to if i hire the publicity hound i i got i i don't want to go hunting i want to go hunting with a dog because they're much better sensors than i am <laughs> so publicity hound she knows where to go she knows how to how to sniff them out she knows where to find the opportunities i i don't i don't i know i think i've um i'm trying to remember if i um i almost met her at all through you once um, and we keep, we keep like ships passing in the night. I'm for sure going to see her this time and sit down and have lunch oh, with yes. her. But, um, yeah. you know, it really, that's what I love about, about Handle and about yours, Book Shepherd. Like I said, every time I start getting ready to write a book, the very first phone call I make is to you because you give me the advice that I need to, to clear out all the clutter. I mean, I could, I can go investigate myself. But I can't. I don't have time, and I don't even have the knowledge of what I'm supposed to be investigating. I've got, I'll I'll tell you what, I've got the knowledge to to measure my own metrics on social media. I've been in social media since before it was called social media. I know how to go out and find my competitors, do the Google Analytics, look up SEO mods, find the ranking, do all that kind of stuff. And I pay presents $99 a month to do it for me. Why? Because I pay them a hundred dollars a month, and they're saving me like six hours of work and doing a better job because of the access to materials and tools that they have. That they're spreading the cost over lots of clients, and they're giving me a report. They're telling me what it means, and I'm looking and saying, "Okay, I'm on the right track, or I need to make some adjustments." And and my my employer thinks that I'm just well because you know I am. <laughs> Thankfully, I proved I was the bomb before I took this, but this has really been helpful. So mm-hmm. what are you going to do as an author, whether you're brand new or this is your sixth or tenth or fiftieth book? You don't go it alone. There's no possible way you can be successful without help. It's a community effort. 
Oh, it takes a village. You know, I, I, Lori, I just finished my 33rd book. I'm at the print. And I put in, instead of writing acknowledgments or thank you, I, I, I put like meet my village. And I went through each person nice. what they did, you know, on that. Because nice. it does take a village to do this stuff. Well, so to get back to the question then, who are the people that you're surrounding yourself with? Do they have expertise in the area that you're trying to publish in, the, the mm-hmm. topic of your book, the identity of your brand? So I use at Lori Ruff and at LinkedIn Diva on Twitter. At LinkedIn Diva is pure business. She talks about, and pardon me for talking about her in the third person, but she's an entity, right? She's a, she's a persona. And so LinkedIn Diva, people go to her when they want questions and answers about LinkedIn and related topics. Her clout score is about hovers between 54 and 59. Um, it was 59 on a good day when there's a lot of news going around about LinkedIn and people are sharing the tips and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I have everything that goes out. Um, I used to answer on both accounts, but now everything that goes out on, on LinkedIn Diva is mechanized, if you will. Um, I still do it. I drive it, but it's it, I don't hardly ever do it real time. On at Lori Ruff, what you see is what you get. You get me. And at Lori Ruff is the same in person, online, in real life, on stage, sitting at the at the lobby bar after the after the event is over or first thing in the morning, you're gonna get me. And you don't know what you're gonna get because I'm a human being. <laughs> I have frailties, I have I have successes, <laughs> I have strengths. Um, and one of my strengths, by the way, is I'm sweet. Everybody talks about how sweet I am, right? Oh yeah, thank you so much. That's so sweet. You're so sweet, right? Oh, my and God. so I'm getting ready to do this book on C-suite um, branding for C-suite executives and helping them identify um, their own personal brand, particularly as it relates to the work that they do and representing themselves online because they better get it right now. And the title of the book, which you helped me come up with, was Sweet Branding. Yeah. Sweet spelled like the C-suite, S-U-I-T-E, because it fits the topic and it yep. fits me. And so it's, yes. it's very well aligned. And I, frankly, I think it's the best book title that I've come up with yet. Yeah. And so, you know, what, she, what Lori's done is she's got a play off on a well-known word, sweet, sweet, versus well-known in her field that she is talking to, the C, you know, the corporate, the high level, the C-suite. So it, it's a it's a good play on on words. Actually, I always I don't think of you as sweet, Lori. I think of you as a smart broad. <laughs> Thank you. But I can be sweet. It's been proven and, and yeah, noted. Okay, and I, have it on, I have it on audio, recording, video, all kinds of things. So the subtopic, too, you helped me with that, the, the subtitle. So see uh, Sweet Branding, um, Personal Branding, the Ultimate Personal Branding Guide for Today's Top Performers. So people yeah. who are in the C-suite, people who want to get to the C-suite, and people who think they're a top performer. So it, while it's focusing it on C-suite executives, it's great information for everybody who's a go-getter or as Bob Berg would say, a go-giver. Yes. And who wants to do that climb, who's in the climb and they're reaching. So Mm -hmm. gee, if that's what those guys are doing or those gals or whatever they're saying up there, I need to find out what it is so I can emulate it and get the jargon, get the moves, the manners, et cetera. I mean, that's what that's about. Um, and, and, and here's so, something else about branding. Yeah. Now, you described your two Twitter handles as Book Shepherd, which is completely appropriate to what you do. And you mm-hmm. said author you is what? Author, just author you. The letter U, author it, U, is is really more for the author you. But both my names tied to them. But really, for me, a lot of that's automated. But I go on and I look at it um, and add right. into it. At least on Twitter, Twitter is my favorite. It's it's my favorite way to play. Oh, I love, I love. Twitter. Yeah, it's a great way to play. But but it was the way that you described it. So you said that Book Shepherd was your primary and author you. It's my. Um, it, is, call it. it is my secondary where I'm putting up a lot of announcements, I, all, all the podcasts. I mean, the reason why this show has right. grown is because of Twitter. There's no question. Um, oh, right. Definitely. You know, I, I, but I'm what, a huge, what happens, huge believer. Though, you've, got, you've got something that a lot of people have, and that's two brands, right? Plus Judith Bryles. Dr. Yes. Judith Bryles. Yes. Right, author of 30-something books. 30-something, I hear, is a good number to be when you're alive. 33. But, yeah, 33. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we just got 33. <laughs> I'm so excited, which is why you have a PhD. So, um, but the thing is that that um, I would say that Book Shepherd, 
is your primary brand and author you is your brand that supports it and allows you to serve a larger audience. So your book shepherd is your brand for individuals when you're helping people and shepherding their products, their books, their topics through the process of idea to completion to actual publication to actual getting it out there and getting it to number one because there's nobody better at getting things to number one than you are. And then author you is the brand, your educational brand. It's the it's the show. It's the author you extravaganza. It's when you reach people in mass and try to open your skills and your knowledge to more people um, who can you know come in for bite sized pieces or for chunks or for meals. Mm-hmm. And you know, Laura, you're right on because every client, for every personal client I work with as the book shepherd, I automatically their first year of membership, I personally write a check for and pay for to author you because of number one, it will make my life so much easier. If you pay attention, if you read the blogs, if you attend things, if you get involved, it will make our Mm -hmm. journey together much more efficient and you will learn along the way, um, on that. And would I like to write your own check? I just do it. Hmm? So right, so there again, book shepherd and author you, a shepherd typically has a flock. And when I go to author you, your entire flock is there, not just of the, the sheep that are there to learn and to become experts in their field by being a published author, but people, other people that you've helped and other experts that you know, love, and trust to put in front of your audience, your, your um, colleagues. Um, Australian shepherds or you know colleagues or, <laughs> or she- sheepdogs yeah. um, are there as well to guide and protect them. So y- your whole village is there together. So again, the whole name book shepherd fits to everything that you've pulled together over the years, and and that's a really important key point about your brand. Is there something? else that would supplement your brand or another way that it would allow you to grow that would make sense. Which is so critical. Okay, so, Lori, when we come back, yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're close to our, our next break. But what I want you to do and is when we come back, I think it's really critical to really get into what are the steps that people need to do. You know, I mean, step one, where we start the wake up call. I mean, we're talking about, so Author You is the educational arm that I certainly lead to people to as the book shepherd. I mean, I think it's really critical. And it was, it, it, it evolved from that. Um, and actually evolved after the book shepherd was ever stopped. It started. I mean, I just finally said, I've got to do something. So let's come back and we're going to get in step by step by step with branding expert Lori Ruff, who is speaking at the Author You Extravaganza May 7th through 9th. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. This is the Toginet Radio Network, broadcasting quality programming to the world. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. 
Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Hi. All right. Lori Ruff, branding. How do you become the bomb in your field of expertise or how do you become known? First of all, as people are looking for the top person, so they know that you are the go-to bomb to engage, to take them to whatever their next level is they're trying to teach. So there's some steps. And I asked Lori when we came back to kind of, let's kind of go through, uh, you know, I'm kind of like a step one, step two, step three person. So, you know, pretend I'm totally ignorant and naive. Lori, what do I need to do? Well, the very first thing you need to do is go to author you. And I'm not saying that because I'm speaking there and it's your thing. But, again, even before, if you know I want to write a book, I don't know what I want to write it about, you need to go to author you. Because if you don't start building your brand and figuring out who you are and what you need to know, until you know, until you know what you need to know, you don't know what you need to know and you're going to miss steps. And you're going to get three or four or five six, ten steps down the line and say, oh, my gosh, I got to do that, too. I should have done it back there. You know, so why not just get the map from the get-go before you leave on the trip? You, you know, I remember going on, on family vacations, and Mom sat down, and she drew it in red. The, the map, I don't know why she did it that way, but red was the, was the route we were going to take, and green was the alternate route in case of you know, road construction or something unexpected or whatever. And, um, and she always had that mapped out before we left. As a matter of fact, before we started packing for the trip. So you've got to have your map. And so what's that destination going to be like? And then the next thing is your industry or topic expertise. So obviously, if you're writing a nonfiction book like I am about sweet branding, I got that right, right? Nonfiction is the real stuff. I, I, mm-hmm. I always get confused about the double negative thing there. But, um, you know, about brand, I better know about it. I wouldn't start writing a book about sweet branding without having spent years doing it because what am I going to be doing? Just parroting other people. I'm going to be the student doing the research paper who's trying not to plagiarize anybody as opposed to the expert that's telling people and educating them about what I know and giving them expertise. So if it's fiction, you need to even know your world and your topic. I mean, I one of my favorite authors is Anne McCaffrey. Um, as far as fiction, she wrote The Dragons of Pern and that entire series. And I know that before she wrote the entire series, she had Pern all laid out. She had a map. She knew what everybody was like. She had pictures of the characters and sketched and on, on her wall. I, it, I mean, she had built this world before she ever started putting pen to paper to write the first book. And that's why I think it was such a brilliant series. And I, I was sad to see her pass. She actually passed as she was writing the last book in the series. But she had the world so well created around her 
and so well educated her supporters, including her son, that her son was able to finish that last book for her, and you didn't even hear the voice change. I couldn't tell where she was wow. off. Wow, that's huge because usually it's just so yeah. blatantly um, obvious what happens. Right, right, and and she literally. I mean, I, I think I found out when she died, and I was like. I was so, I was, I cried. I was like, oh, oh my God, there's not going to be another book. And <laughs> there was, but, um, you know, the last book in the series. And, and, and I was, I was mortified that we had lost her because I so appreciated her talent. And then I started reading up more about her. And that's where I went deeper and deeper into the topic of who she was and how she created that world and was just astonished. And I realized that in my own life, that I needed to know myself better and I needed Mm -hmm. to know who I was about, what I wanted to do. And honest to God, that is when my professional life took a turn, a drastic turn that I can point to and say, this is when I became Lori Ruff, the professional and started on my track to becoming an executive and having the expertise and the knowledge that I do now around, around LinkedIn and social media and educating people about jobs and finding Uh, jobs representing themselves online to becoming a branding expert. I mean, I'm working for the largest Latino professional association in the United States, the longest standing one, and, and I'm the very first chief branding officer to identify and clarify their brand and to help spread that brand across the entire organization and grow them from 23,000 members to 100,000 members in three years or less. Wow. And and I I I should tell you, I've been hired for that. And who is not a Latino? <laughs> who is not a Latino? I'm as far as you can get. I'm half Polish and half German. I've, I'm, 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 I mean, I'm fair white. I'm not even allowed to go out in the sun because of medication I'm taking for rheumatoid arthritis. And so I'm very white. And you just can't get and blonde. And blonde. And blonde. And blonde, and blonde. Yeah, exactly. The blue eyes are not contacts. I, and, but the thing is, and, and I thought, you know, I, I, I told my boss, I'm like, I don't know very much about Latinos. He said, you don't have to. You'll get it right away. And, and really what I needed to know was what is their passion and their purpose and who are they all about? So when I first joined, I started talking to people because I needed to find the voice of Alpha. And I talked to enough people where I really started to hear consistent phrases and characterizations of Alpha from many, many different members. And that's the same thing that an individual needs to do. Talk to friends and neighbors, supporters who know you and know what you do or who think they know you and know what you do. What do they say about you? And and don't feed them stuff. Um, would, do, mm-hmm. would you say this was true about me? Yes. No, what do, what do people say about me when they when when you hear people talk about me? Mm-hmm. And and that's an honest way. And I, and I need you to be honest because I'm working on a on a life changing project. I'm I'm working on a book. I really need to identify my brand and who I am and what I'm all about. What do people say about me, good or bad? And that will really open. It's your critical. Eyes. You know, it's it's like I am really blunt. And which really does scare some people. I just say things the way yeah. I see it very quickly. You're boldly and that, honest. Yeah. So if if someone wants a really, um, um, I mean, I think it's honest, <laughs> but but they mm-hmm. want an opinion. I will give it. I will not hold back. And I, I have to tell you, Lori, I used to. You know, people show me their book. I oh, this is so nice. You've got your book, and it looked like garbage. I I will say, right. what were you thinking? Really, what right. were you thinking? Um, and try to get into to process them through it. And of course, what they do is where you said, "Oh, you need to join if you want to do a book. You better join off to you pronto." That that the reality is that most people just jump into it thinking it's a no brainer. And the reality mm-hmm. is, you need your brains in gear here. Right. It's it's not a no brainer. Right. Okay. So steps. So we 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 hit a couple steps. What else so, in this process? So- Step, 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 so know everything. And then once you know who you are, then mm-hmm. it's time to find, well, of course, you've identified your supporters and ask them about who you are, and you've now clarified who you are. So you take that knowledge and you start feeding back to people, this is what I think 
um, my bio should say about me. Does it feel good to you? Does it feel right? Does this define me well? And ask your supporters for feedback. Now, this is really interesting, and it's very powerful and very, very important because you're not only getting that second set of feedback from them, you're educating them about who you are and what you're about and what you've decided to go, what direction you're going to go in, who you're, going, who you're going to be, what you're going to talk about, what's important to you. And while you're doing that, you're educating them about how to talk about you to other people, which will spread your brand and amplify your brand mm-hmm. more quickly than anything else. Now, as you do that, now it's time to start crafting, wait for it, your LinkedIn profile. Because if your LinkedIn profile does not align from top the bottom with consistent information. Any inconsistencies and people will feel uncomfortable with you and they won't know why. They won't trust you because there's inconsistencies in your profile. Um, and, and you won't ever have a chance to talk to them to find out why people aren't looking at your profile or, or if a lot of people are looking at your profile and nobody's reaching out to talk to you, there's a problem. You're getting 39 views a day, but nobody sends a message. There's a reason. Right? Are you being open and, and are you approachable? You may not want to be. You might be Richard Branson and don't approach me, please. But he does want people to approach him with ideas because he wants to empower those ideas, right? So you would yes. think that he's not. So the next step then is to get your profile as polished as possible. And I start there because it's so comprehensive and dynamic. Then I go to Twitter where you've got 160 characters to describe yourself and a beautiful picture and your logo or your photo and the things that you talk about. So I had one guy who was in sales, and he was just reposting any willy-nilly thing that he thought about and that he saw. I said, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. But wait a minute. Who's your audience, and what are they interested in? They're they're sales directors. They're interested in sales and how to do this job better. You better refine your Twitter traffic and start talking about what they care about, or you're not going to have them as as people. They're not going to care about what you have to say because most of what you have to say doesn't apply to them. So you've got to figure out who your audience is and start talking to them. And what you said on Twitter, it's an incredible place to engage and to test thoughts and ideas and put out a quote and see if it resonates with people. Even if it doesn't once, I'll put a quote out five or six times and see if it resonates because one time maybe nobody saw it or it was just the wrong time of day. Two or three other times it'll hit big. I've I've had hundreds of retweets on some things, and some of that I know how to make happen on purpose, but I've had hundreds of retweets on things that I did not light a fire under. So I know, Mm -hmm. okay, that resonated. I'm going to keep talking about that, Mm -hmm. right? So I talk to executives. So I talk about what they care about, not just LinkedIn, but about things that they care about that help them represent themselves better. And so what you're doing, here's what I'm hearing, is that um, as we go into our final break here, but I'm hearing clarity. What you're trying to do in whichever whichever avenue, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, fill in the blank, that you're trying to deliver succinctly with, with, with high content clarity to whatever it is you're trying to share or respond to. Would that be a good summary? Right. Yes, okay. usually. Yeah. And by the way, I put it out on Twitter first, and the things that perform well go to LinkedIn, not the other way around. Ah, uh, interesting. And now let's, let's mention something on LinkedIn about the reposting of blogs and things like that or articles. We'll be right back. Lori Ruff, we're talking about amplifying who you and you are in a brand. This is Judith Files. This is your, your guide to book publishing. publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need The Book Shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. 
Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303 303- 885-2207. That's 303-885-2207. Or email her at Judith at Bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at my book shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. Customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four color high speed inkjet printing, a cost effective way to introduce color into your short run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in house from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print on demand facility, streaming browser based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1 800 465 5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, it's springtime. Summer's coming, which makes me really a happy girl because I am a summer girl. I grew up on the beach and I am, I don't know, some people say, what are you living in Colorado for? Well, it's in the middle of the country and I need it for my travels and my working. And that's still right, but I always want the sun and that. So we're certainly seeing that now starting to come. Flowers are coming out wherever you are in the country as you listen in here. But one of the things is that brings the spring into the air and we'll put it together is that brand that Lori Ruff, our expert, and, and she's a passionate social influencer. And maybe, Lori, we ought to talk a little bit about how do you identify influencers because I'm always ragging on authors to know who their top influencers are in their genres, in their areas of, of their areas of expertise. And they kind of sometimes look at me like, you know, the deer with the headlights in the eyes, That's which I'm, I'm, I'm always amazed great. about. I'm, hmm? Well, yeah, I mean, well, because they're like, how do I know somebody's influential? I, I think nobody's, I think everybody's afraid to ask that question. But when I talk about who to find, how to find influencers, first I, I talk about how to identify who's influential in that genre. So if you think about, um, say you're, you're, you're writing in the genre of, um, of Anne McCaffrey, let's go back to, to her, and writing, um, you know, sci-fi fantasy kind of stuff. And um, and that kind of a genre. So, who are the best-selling authors in that in that genre? Now, go look and see. Do they have social media profiles? Some of them might. Some of them might not. Obviously, the ones that aren't still here, hopefully, don't. Um, if they do, I'm going to guess that they're just not a real account. But if you look at who is following that person and talking about them, um, for example, when one of our um, uh, for Alpha, the Association of Latino Professionals for America, we um, empower and develop Latino men and women to become leaders of character for the nation in every sector of the economy. So one of the leaders of character that for Latina is Shakira, usually first woman to meet, to, first person to reach a million fans on Facebook, right? And she's, she cares about early childhood education and development, and she's with child now and she's doing a worldwide baby shower with UNICEF. 
So what I did was compile a book of quotes, an aha book, and, and we have one for mm -hmm. author you, actually. Mm -hmm. So if you look mm -hmm. at alpha, A-L-P-F-A, alphalibrary.org, you'll see um, quotes by Shakira that I curated. Now, that book's free because I don't want to charge for her book because of her words. But when we started talking about Shakira and started promoting her, her followers started following us. Isn't that interesting? Now, I haven't engaged her in conversation via Twitter or any other platform yet. But if I do, our influence is going to go through the roof, right? So who are the people that are really speaking to your audience? And then look at the people that are talking about them and people who are engaged with them. So number one, who's big in the world, in your world? Number two, who are they talking to? Those are the most powerful influencers. Number three, who else is talking about them, even if that person's not talking to them, because those are people who are growing their influence appropriately and in the right way, I hope, and talking about them and, and engaging conversation and tap into that network because that will get you noticed more quickly than anything you've ever, it'll make your head spin how fast you start joining the conversation and leading it. That's really mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. Extraordinarily powerful. And I, you know, we shall say, since we were talking about Twitter earlier, um, I remember when Shakira was on The Voice, which is one of the shows I kind of like to do a drop mm -hmm. out and watch, um, that she had, you know, she let people know I have 20 million Twitter followers. 20 right. million. And she right. uh, interacts with them. That's insane. She does. She talks to them. It, it's insane. And, and she's that real. She's that genuine and authentic. And, and her quotes are amazing. You know, things that you just wouldn't think about coming from a pop star. But she's so much more than a pop star. She recognizes the power she has in the world. Now, let's take that same idea to LinkedIn groups. There are hundreds of thousands and actually more than a million LinkedIn groups or more than 100, I don't know how many, I, there's so many LinkedIn groups. So when you search a keyword, they typically come up in the most popular ones at the top, and then, and then the smallest um, ones with one or two or five people. Don't, don't join those groups, and don't start your own group until you know what you're doing. But, for example, join the Book Shepherd group. Um, if I'm your client, I'm going to join that group. Join the Author You group because I want to engage with your community and learn what they're learning. And so I can continue my learning and education throughout the year. But I also find out who's trending, who's got, who's a top influencer because they're posting discussions and getting engagement. Don't just, don't just post a discussion. Start joining the conversation. Comment on other people's discussions because when you do, you're showing up. Your name and your photograph shows up when you post a comment on a discussion. And so people start to notice not only that you're there and engaging, but that you heard them. And that's going to make your influence grow and help other people talk to you and with you. And when people are talking to you and with you in social media, those are the most noticed people around. Those are the most active, the most engaged people because they figured out how to listen first and, and encourage conversation around any particular topic. Mm -hmm. And, and that's really just really important. So I, I know just with listening to this, this, our conversation for this past hour, I'm going to do a few things really different. I mean, I'm actually one that does, I put out a lot of stuff. Uh, I put out stuff early in the morning to all day on a variety of different topics. And I do a lot of it involves the different podcasts because I support them as I think it's really mm -hmm. valuable information. I've always felt that if you will listen to what we do on the radio, if you will, you know, read this blog, never Number one, you will shortcut everything you need to do. You'll just, you know, you'll right. do that leap forward. Um, I love going from step one to step five if I can do it. I mean, that nothing makes me happier, <laughs> Lori. <if I> can... <laughs> yes. How can I get there quicker? Put me on a jet plane, not the prop. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I want to fly in the tube, not on the wing, but I want to go on the fastest one possible. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, so you know what exactly. I mentioned before we're over, I wanted to go back to LinkedIn because you are the LinkedIn diva. So what are some of the tricks there that we should do with our branding? So 
also, as I said just before the break, try your content out on Twitter first. First of all, people may not see it anyway. Um, you know, just a couple of people will see it um, and until you start growing your influence. And by the time you do that, you'll have a much more clarity around your brand, who you are and what you want to talk about and what your audience wants to hear. Now, notice um, on LinkedIn Diva uh, Twitter handle, I said her clout score was in the 50s, mid 50s. And um at Lori Ruff, my cloud score is 78, 79. That's because I engage with people, and I'm, I'm, even though I am more broad, what you see is what you get, and I'll talk about anything, I'm still very, very focused on what I talk about for the most part. And just like any human being, though, I might stand at the water cooler and talk about the NFL draft is coming up soon, and I can't wait, right? So, um, and, and other people who like the NFL who happen to be executives talk to me about that, too. It's kind of fun. But then I take that great content back to LinkedIn because it's a professional environment. I want to post things that I know are going to be received well. So Twitter is my testing ground. LinkedIn's where I post it for maximum effect. And then what I'll do, Judith, honestly, is I, I have um, developed a community of about 50 people who I'll – watch them on purpose, what they're, what they're doing, what they're talking about. We talk about similar things. We share an audience for the most part. Mark Schaefer, for example, we share an audience and I'll watch for his content and I'll go out and like it, comment on it and encourage him to do the same thing. When I like and comment or when I post a discussion, if it's really important for me to see that get some traction, I'll send a private message to those, some of those 50 people five or ten of them or so, and ask them for their thoughts on it. Mark, I posted this thing on this topic, and I, I respect your opinion in this area. I wonder if you'd mm. really take a quick look at it and leave a comment mm -hmm. and let me know what you think. Mm -hmm. Good idea. And so I'm asking for engagement, right? And it's only, I don't do it every time because that would be overkill. I'm really overstaying my welcome. But I do it where it's important and where it's going to add value. So in those groups... Um, you know, I'm looking to engage, in, for example, in Officer U, I'm going to look to engage people that I need as vendors and people who can help me move my project forward. I'm going to mm -hmm. ask questions, answer questions, engage them in conversations so that they'll give me the information I need to know to be successful. And I'm going to engage other people who are writing on the same or similar topics to learn from each other. I want to be real careful there, though, because I don't want to parrot what they're saying I want to engage in dialogue to test my theories and ideas. If they're going to shoot it down and other people agree with them, I need to go rethink my ideas. And so by doing all of this in social media, there are all those other people on the other side of the computer screen. And it's like I'm at this conference or work session or breakout sessions and really spending quality time on my book. And Judith, I'm doing it in about 10 minutes twice a day. Yep. And that makes a huge, huge difference. So we've got, you know, just like 45 seconds here to wrap up. But that number one, if you still are on the fence, get to the author you extravaganza. I just had someone book from Austin earlier this week for $138 round trip. I mean, I have to fly to Las Vegas uh, later, tomorrow, actually, and it's 460 and I booked it a month ago and it hasn't gone down. That makes me wow. cuckoo. Um, with that kind of stuff. <laughs> it makes me cuckoo. But come to the extravaganza. Meet Lori Ruff. Meet John Kramer. Meet Daniel Hall in person. You never can undersell the value of face-to-face. -face. I don't care how much oh, we do remote today. Face-to-face -face is the bomb. How's that, Lori? Yeah, that it's is the bomb. the bomb, for it sure. It is the bomb. Th All there's right. nothing better than face-to-face. -face. Share a hug. Yeah, share a hug. AuthorU.org. This is Judith Bryles. Thank you, Lori Ruff. We'll be back with you next week with the outrageous, and sometimes you never know where he's going, John Kramer, the author of A Thousand and One Ways to Market Your Book. Have a great writing day. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, 